Hey everybody, been doing a follow-up video for my G&G Hawk Model C Deadlock. Um, got it in pieces here, not because there's anything wrong with the knife. I've just, it's been about a year and a half using this knife as my EDC or everyday carry. Um, I'm not one of those people, and I'm not knocking the types who do this, but I'm just saying, I'm making a point, if you will. Um, I don't have multiple knives that I rotate through every day of the week. If that's your thing, more power to you, great. I, I'm the kind of guy who, when I find something I enjoy using, I stick to it. And that's it. That's just my personality type. So, a little background information for you. If you're watching one of my videos about this knife in particular for the first time, um, my Model C Deadlock. Um, I've been a Deadlock owner from day one, so to speak. So, in other words, when Gavin initially released the Model A, I basically found out about it coming out by accident. I don't even remember exactly how I learned that the deadlock was going to be a thing. Um, I think I followed some other knife people online on social media and I'd seen some of his other knives. Um, yeah, I think that's how it happened. So initially, anyway, <laughs> that's how I got into the deadlock. I owned a Model A when it came out and I'm not saying anything bad about Hawk Knives, or Gavin in particular, but because I've always had a great experience with them, let me just put that out there. They've always taken great care of me as a customer, just like I would expect to be taken care of by any business these days, even being a small business guy myself, I try to put my customer first. I don't have the, the customer's always right mentality because sometimes they're not. That's just life and human nature. <laughs> but good customer service is good customer service and as many of you watching know, many companies just don't seem to understand what that is anymore. But these guys have it nailed down. Um, anyway, my Model A had its problems when I got it. Um, basically, it had a failure, or I hate to say failure. It basically had a flaw in the lock mechanism for whatever the reason. Um, I got my Model A, was excited for it to be my dream knife, you know. Always wanted a double action out the front that locked up solid. Who wouldn't, you know? Um, and I get it. It locks up like it's supposed to, but then I bought this knife to be a user. Believe it or not, from day one, I've always wanted a knife like this that I could use and carry, um, regardless of the price point. So, um, Model A, one of the first times I use it, breaking down some double layer cardboard boxes, not doing anything too crazy, just a fairly regular, normal-ish cutting task. And within a few minutes, I notice as I'm cutting through boxes that my, my switch, my actuator switch on the frame, this guy, right, is starting to, it, well, something's rattling in the knife. And I figure it out upon inspection, the switch is moving back and forth. I'm like, what in the world's going on? So close the knife, open it back up, everything checks out, switch is sturdy, blades locked open like I would expect, go back to cutting. Within a few more minutes, same thing's going on again. My switch is kind of, it's rattling around in the handle, back and forth, right? Like that. While I'm trying to cut. I ignore it this time and just decide I'm going to continue cutting. I know, it's, pretend the blade's there. Okay. Cutting, cutting, and then the knife collapses on me, basically. The, the handle goes into the, the frame, or the handle, whatever you want to call it. The blade goes into the handle, and I'm like, what in the world? That's not supposed to happen. Obviously, right? <laughs> So I do another inspection from my layman's view, open, close, open, close. The knife seems okay, but I shoot Gavin, Gavin an email and he says, yeah, man, that doesn't sound right. Send it in. So I send it in, get it back in about a week, fast customer service, you know, really good turnaround time. And I forget what Gavin said exactly he did, but he made some tweaks, polished some things, that kind of stuff. And it seemed a little better, but the problem was still there. So... Think what you want. I put the knife aside for a while. I just, I had my own thoughts, but I'll keep them to myself. Um, nothing too negative, but basically I just decided, you know what? It's the Model A. It's a first generation of this design. I'll give him a break. Leave him alone for a while. Plus, I believe either I had heard online, seen online, or with one of my email interactions with Gavin back then, there was rumor or discussion of the Model B coming soon. So I figured, let's see what the Model B brings. 
reapproach it, use another knife in the meantime, blah, blah, blah. So Model B comes out. I check in with Gavin. I say, hey, man, he remembered who I was, of course. Um, do you think I could do a trade, basically, an even trade, given my issues with my Model A? He said, yeah, we can do that for you, no problem. So I send him my Model A when he's ready. He's caught up with his other newer orders and basically get my Model B back to me, I don't know, a few months later. And it solved the issue that the Model A had with the lock design. Basically, in a nutshell, um, it came down to a combination of the lock mechanism inside the blade here. Those parts moving, what I'm referring to is the lock mechanism. Total redesign, if you've ever seen Gavin's Model A video where he opened one up and showed you the lock mechanism. In the Model B and C, we get a redesign that fixed the stability issues. And then we also got a redesign of what he calls the strike plate, this piece of steel here that interacts with the blade pin and the lockup of the knife, all that stuff. So if the Model C had never come along, honestly, I would have been perfectly happy with my Model B for the rest of my life. I mean, it, I had what I wanted, double action out the front knife, locks up rock solid like I always hoped for, right? Dreamed of. But being the kind of knife guy that I am, I pay attention, keep my ear to the ground, and I see a few months later or maybe a year down the road that the Model C was in the works. So I email Gavin. I'm like, Gavin, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm that guy. Really like the looks of the Model C, but I see that you're, he was talking about the first run or two, maybe, eventually you became all the Model Cs, as far as I'm aware of, at this point in time anyway, probably not gonna have single edge blade offerings. So I'm like, I really like the looks of the Model C, but I'd really like a, mod, you know, a, a single edge blade. So do you think when you get caught up with making the newer Model Cs for the new paying customers, if I sent you, Again, send you in my Model B. Could you, do you think my single edge blade from my Model B would fit in a Model C frame? And he got back to me a few days later. He's like, yeah, Ben, I think we could probably do that for you. Give me a few months, check in. So I checked in a few months later. He's like, yeah, we're ready. Send it in, send in your Model B. And I got my Model C in the mail six months or whenever down the road later, however long it took, I don't recall exactly. It's been about a year and a half now ago, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I absolutely love this knife, honestly. I don't care if there's a Model D, E, or F. <laughs> I'm done, I've got what I wanted. So, um, enough rambling on, backstory, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna point out a couple things. I'm gonna start putting this knife back together while I continue to talk. Um, another change or two inside the Model C that may not be obvious or some of you may not even be aware of. Um, I've seen things online said, speculatory things and other review videos of people who, you know, being nice, just don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're just unboxer videos, nothing on those people, but they don't know what the inside of the knife is about, what it looks like. Okay, no big deal. Obviously when you watch our videos, right? So in the Model A and B, we had a spring hook at the front of the knife and one at the back. Now I've come to learn that the spring hook mechanism has been replaced in the Model C with a basically a, a wire spring. It's a coil design, and then you have a wire on either end. And that's basically, from my understanding, to reduce space overall inside the handle, the frame, make it more streamlined internally as well as externally. In order to do that, they had to get rid of some space and the solution was replace the spring hook mechanism up here or down there with this, what they call a torsion spring. Or yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, um, what that looks like in person or up close outside of the frame is these guys. There's a few in this bag. Hold that there. You should be able to see that. All right, so I've got a few extras just because I'm a gun guy as well, and being around firearms most of my life, I understand. Even with the best of design intentions, things wear out once in a while. I also picked up a little bit of 
I'm not a beggar, but I asked if I could get some extra springs. I've got an extra pair of main springs, probably overkill. I'm sure the springs that are in the knife would probably last who knows how long. A couple hundred thousand cycles, maybe my lifetime, who knows, but just in case, right? Might as well. Plus I've got an extra set of screws, two sets. Basically every screw in the frame, and inside and out. In case I lose one, whatever, I'll be set for life, <laughs> essentially. Um, there's a steel insert, basically a machine block here in the frame that interacts with the ball detent in the lock mechanism inside the blade. When that dude pops up in the lock position, you've got steel on steel. In case you were wondering how that might work. And, I mean, overall, this knife has been awesome. Again, I've had about a year and a half now. I've got no complaints, no signs of any loss of tolerance in lockup, no serious wear and tear, no complaints. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it back together. And to do that, I'm just gonna put my switch to the rear. You don't really have to do that as long as your blade pin is within the main springs. In other words, inside these guys here. So I'm just putting this back inside when I got to drop my ball detent there, putting the knife back into the unlock mechanism position. Um, and by the way, when I put the blade in there, take a look at the tolerances around that blade if you can. You make that out. Unlike a lot of other out the front knives on the market, I can grab the blade and try to, you know, there's a little up and down movement, but it's not significant enough that you'll ever have blade edge wear as the blade is coming in or out of the handle. I'm just gonna kinda put it back there. I don't suggest putting it back in the rearward fully unlocked or locked rearward position just because any spring tension on the mechanism is potential for eh, not it's you're not gonna spring out of there like some other knives, but I just like to do it like that. Strike plate goes back on next. And certain screws go in certain places. Um, overall, there's nothing too special that you have to remember. It's kind of like anything else when you take something apart. Just remember where things were when you took them out. <laughs> the first four screws in the that go through the strike plate, these thread down into the, the 7075 aluminum frame, by the way, which I don't consider that to be an issue because 7075 is unlike 6061 aluminum, for example, that's, from what I understand, is softer. 7075 is as hard as some steels, although, of course, it's not steel. Um, but you don't have to be as gentle with 7075 aluminum as you would, say, 6061, from the way I understand things. They also use, g, &G Hawk, they use a hard coat type 3 anodized finish on their aluminum, so... I don't know what other industry makers do as far as that goes, the anodizing finish, but from what I understand, 70, you know, the combination of 7075 and the Type 3 hard coat anodizing is a very good idea. It basically creates a lubricity over the, the, the aluminum while also protecting it. Now this screw is also the longest inside of that goes through the strike plate, so you just have to remember where that guy came out of. It goes in that one corner there. And it basically goes back through that steel block in the frame I showed you earlier. Now, once those are all in place, if, you're, if you've ever taken apart anything, put anything back together like this, multiple screws in multiple places, it's best to start them out just, you know, fitting in there loosely, semi-loosely, and then go back and snug them down. And when I tighten these down, I'm not like he-manning them in there. I'm just snugging them down, finger tight. I go around each screw a couple times and I'm good. I really like the way they construct this one, this model. Screws going into the frame and then through the scale with another set. Putting the top plate of the frame back on, right over the strike plate. Fits down nice and snug there. 
And all of these screws are the same length. However, there is a, a fifth screw. There, you got four, you got five just like through the strike plate. You got these first four that are visible. And then there's one that goes via a hole, an access hole through the pocket clip here. There's one under there. I'm gonna talk about that here in a moment. And these go down into the steel strike plate, so you can be, I don't know, a little more, a little less careful with these. Saw some guys talking a while back about the concern of the aluminum frame, and I was like, I don't know. Not that you're stupid or an idiot, but... I mean, how many military-grade rifles, firearms in general, have used this same type of aluminum for decades? And, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, there's the screw under the pocket clip here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Maybe, maybe not. That's okay. Believe me, it's there. Um, to get to that, when you're putting the knife back together, ideally, you need something to have the clip held up because the way the hole goes through here and then trying to line up your tool with the head of the screw and then there are screw threads you're trying to line the screw up with inside the, the strike plate in that spot, you're not going to get an alignment. If you try to just tighten that puppy back down, you'll struggle and you may strip a screw thread on the screw itself if you keep struggling trying to get that in place. So the best thing to do that I learned, quick little trip here, tip here, is to just take something like a cotton swab or a folded piece of paper if you want, put it under this clip, you may have to go in this way, and then just kind of have it raised up a little bit like that, however many millimeters. And then you can get to that screw through this hole and it will line up with the screw threads inside the strike plate much more easily, directly. I'm just gonna turn that guy down, finger snug like the others, and I can take my Q-tip out of there. I'm gonna go back around one more time. Another cool thing about these knives, from my experiences with this one, all of my deadlocks, honestly, compared to other knives in the industry, um, I've never seen it be the case, even using this knife daily, even when I was the newbie, excited, oh my God, gotta open and close it multiple times a day, right? We all go through that phase. If you don't, you're a weirdo. Um, these screws do not shake themselves loose through knife use, so that's not really a concern. You don't have to put Loctite on them, in my opinion. Um, and I also run my deadlock dry. I don't lube it on the inside. I'm gonna pop it back open here. Okay, quick function check. Of course, it still works, duh. And again, still the rock solid lock up that it had when I got it. Who would expect otherwise, right? So again, G&G Hawk, Deadlock, Model C, Single Edge Unicorn. Love it. Not getting rid of it. Don't make me any offers. It's my knife for life, so to speak. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.